right in the heart of Balboa Park, you'll find the unique biodiversity and natural history of San Diego on display. But the work at the San Diego Natural History Museum is not just about preserving the past. Researchers are also working to conserve and protect the health of our country's future. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis had us tag along on her behind the scenes tour. It is a hot summer day here in San Diego, but as soon as those temperatures drop, I will be in my favorite sweatshirt, but we're actually going to check out one of my favorite places here in San Diego County. And we're not just talking about the exhibits. We're also talking conservation with behind the scenes. Look over here. We've got the original 1933 plans that show how this was planned to be a natural history museum. This trip back in time and first stop on our tour is brought to us by Ari Hammond, curator and director of the Research Library. We are looking at the original blueprints for the Natural History Museum in San Diego, which was designed after the Panama, California Exposition in 1916. This allowed people more access into San Diego. This building was constructed with Southern California wildlife and the details. Well, mostly. Bighorn sheep. Right. Recognize that. Bear. Bear. Okay, what else do we have? It looks like some swans oh, wow. here, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another, like, sheep or ram in here. Some sort of dragons? I don't know. That's pretty cool. What they were thinking in the I'm about to say, wait a minute. Ari <laughs> like, and I had a good laugh <laughs> a about that thing. one. But dragons like, are yeah, not. The original know. images of the earliest flora and fauna are captured on delicate so glass behind the research library exhibit for now. The main goal is to digitize these thousands of images dating back to 1890s to the 1930s to be online and stored in the biodiversity archive for everyone's viewing pleasure around the world. That is so cool. And how cool for conservation to see how things have changed over time. On our next stop, we are heading to the Department of Birds and Mammals for a show and tell with Philip Unit, curator of this wing of the museum. From bats to birds, Philip details research findings of specimens relevant to Southern California, including the tricolor black. So this species has now been designated as um, uh, endangered by the state of California just in what, the last two or three years? Environmental and industrial changes to their habitats have led to mite infestation and even strings being caught in their talons. In this yeah. department, conservation research is key may not be on other people's radar screen and can uh, you know, balloon into the uh, effect of formerly abundant birds becoming rare or dying out entirely. Let's slither over to the herpetology department to meet Frank Santana, the collections manager. The amphibians are the cutest, right? Oh, that's so yeah. What some might not find cute is this impressive display in the basement of the Nat. This is home to the largest collection of rattlesnakes found in any natural history museum in the world. Over 9,000 specimens are located here, dating back to the early 1900s. The research in this department can help to shape and understand our biodiversity. That benefits conservation too, right? So if they're surviving in a different way, if they're eating a certain different prey base now compared to 100 years ago, maybe protecting that prey base and understanding how they interact with the environment now keeps them from um, declining to the point where they don't exist anymore. From the future of our ecosystem to unearthing the past, Christopher Pluth, the lab manager of the paleontology department, showed me around the lab where every trace of natural history is important, from this tiny tooth to the research of ancient predators. These bad boys are reproductions, which include a dire wolf already found in San Diego, but the search continues for more. Now, there's a saber-toothed cat out in Anza Borrego, so that's why we feel like it should be here, but we haven't found it yet. From fossils to ancient plants, and I mean ancient, this cobra lily is from 1876. Then the insect goes in this hole that looks like a mouth, mm -hmm. and they go down in here, but then they cannot go reverse because no, of the way the hairs are pointed. 
While I didn't have time to even look at a quarter of the 300,000 plant specimens stored away, Dr. John Rebman, curator of botany for the Nat, didn't let this Southwest girl leave without touching one of these prickly beauties. To bring it home, the exhibits at the Nat give you a look at the history of our ecosystem and biodiversity, but the research conducted by the team is also helping shed light on our future. People are gonna be here and wilderness is gonna be here too. So part of our work is very focused on making sure that those two things can coexist. Love to oh, hear Cypress. Thanks for showing me around. For CBS 8, I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis.